Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Today we are traveling to wonderful Cordoba, one of our true Spanish passions. And stay till the end of the video as we discuss how many days you should spend in the city. For those unfamiliar, Cordoba is in the south of Spain in the interior of the administrative division of Andalusia. As Cordoba doesn't have an important airport, you will probably reach the city either by high-speed train or by bus. The railway station and the coach station are next to each other some 20 minutes on foot to the center of the city. Let's have a look in the map at the location of the main Cordoba sites we will be talking about in the video. As you will realize, they are all in or very near the center of Cordoba. Cross Cordoba's medieval wall through the Puerta de Sevilla, Seville's gate, to gain access to the Barrio de San Basilio, one of the most traditional neighborhoods of Cordoba. San Basilio is famous because it concentrates a sizable number of patios, the traditional Cordoba courtyards. They form part of the UNESCO World Heritage List and are one of the symbols of the city. If you wish so, you can visit a few courtyards that open their doors to the public. A series of sculptures, both in the San Basilio neighborhood and at other addresses in Córdoba, pay homage to those that look after the patios, making sure Córdoba looks splendid all year round. In Cordoba you will find courtyards of all sizes and styles. Next to the Barrio de San Basilio, you will find the Caballeriza Reales, the royal stables, created in the 16th century by King Philip II, with the purpose of breeding purebred horses. The boxes where the horses are kept are found around a central square. If you're lucky, you'll get the chance to see the beautiful horses while they are being trained. The horses are another symbol of Córdoba. If you like horses, we wouldn't miss the horse show taking place at the Caballeriza Reales several nights a week. The fortress of the Alcázar de los Reyes Cristianos is one of the most important monuments in Córdoba. It served as a palace for Muslim rulers first and then for the Christian kings. The visit is divided into two different spaces. First, you will enter the fortress and its patios. Then you will walk through the extensive and delightful gardens.
Catholic monarchs of Spain lived here for eight years while the final assault on Granada was taking place. It was during that time that Columbus came to Cordoba to seek help from the monarchs. The meeting is remembered in a group of sculptures you will see in the middle of the gardens. The Puente Romano, Cordoba's Roman bridge, is the city's most famous bridge, although there is very little left on it from Roman times. Crossing the pedestrian bridge is a true delight during the day and especially at dusk. From the other side of the river you will enjoy a beautiful view of the Guadalquivir River and the Mosque Cathedral. On the far end of the bridge you will see the Calahorra Tower. On the city side of the bridge it stands the aptly named Puerta del Puente, the bridge gate, an old point of entry into Córdoba for those coming from the south. Its monumental looks are from the time of Philip II. We cross the Almodovar Gate to enter the Juderia, the old Jewish quarter of Córdoba, a maze of narrow streets where the Jewish community of the city lived in medieval times. Today the Juderia is a World Heritage property. Located in the heart of the Jewish quarter, Cordoba's synagogue is the only one left in Andalusia. It was used for cult until the expulsion of Jews from Spain in 1492. Right next to the synagogue you will find the Soco Municipal de Artesanía, an arts and crafts market Cordoba City Hall set up for the local craftsmen and women. The Soco contains a beautiful arched courtyard, a fine example of the courtyard tradition we mentioned earlier. In the different rooms around the courtyard you will find the studios where artists work materials such as leather, ceramics, silver or wood. Another outstanding place in the Jewish quarter is the Capilla Mudejar de San Bartolome, Cordoba's little treasure. Mudejar art was carried out by Muslim craftsmen that remained in Spain after the Catholic conquest. In the inside of the chapel you will find decorations and shapes traditional of Muslim art.
everyone who goes to Cordoba wants to visit its splendid mosque cathedral right next to the Jewish quarter. And if you think the mosque looks beautiful from the outside, with its bell tower dominating the center of Cordoba, wait, wait till you go inside. Due to its importance, we are going to record an entire video on the mosque. As soon as it's ready, you will see the link on the upper right hand corner of the screen. In the meanwhile, have a look at some of the marvels waiting for you inside the mosque. visiting the mosque, one of the outstanding surprises happens when, right in the heart of the mosque, it emerges the majestic Catholic cathedral, a stark in contrast between religions and cultures. In the more modern center of Córdoba there are also a handful of interesting places with two important squares, the Plaza de las Tendillas and the beautiful Plaza de la Corredera. On your way from one of the squares to the other, you will see the remains of Cordoba's Roman temple. But where the magic happens is in the smallest squares spread throughout the center of Cordoba. If 
you have time and love patios and flowers, there is a wonderful place for you, unmissable if you visit Cordoba during the spring, the Palacio de Viana. The Viana Palace is a listed building containing 12 courtyards and patios, each one different from the next one. We visited the palace during fall when the flowers are definitely not at their best, and even so we loved it and we can't wait to return in spring. have mentioned so far the main sites of Cordoba, but to be honest, one of the most delightful activities in the city of Cordoba is the callejeo, the term we Spaniards use to refer to the practice of wandering around the streets, making fantastic discoveries along the way. Whether one of the most famous streets, as the Callejón de las Flores, the Calleja del Pañuelo, the Callejón del Indiano, or the Calle Cairuan, two other lesser known but equally interesting streets. Having enough time in the city to indulge in callejear is essential if you'd like to have an intense Cordoba experience. We are going to mention a short side trip from Cordoba for those that have a little bit of extra time. It is the archaeological site of Medina Azahara, recently added by UNESCO to the World Heritage Site list. We plan on recording a video on Medina Azahara as soon as it is ready, you know, you will see the link on the upper right hand corner of the screen. Food is an essential part of any visit to Cordoba. Among the many delicacies you can eat in the city, we are going to mention six. The first dish is probably the most famous Cordoba tradition, the Salmorejo Cordobés, that even has a tiny alleyway dedicated to it. It is a cold cream served as a starter and prepared with breadcrumbs, garlic, olive oil, vinegar, salt and tomato. It is usually served with bits of egg and cured ham. The second dish is the mazamorra, another cold cream made with almonds, breadcrumbs and garlic and that can be served with egg, black olives and other ingredients such as grapes and sultanas. The flamenquine is prepared with cured ham rolled around pork, coated in breadcrumbs and fried and served with fries and mayonnaise. Another tradition from Cordoba is the rabo de toro, ox tail prepared with a bull's tail.
We simply adore berenjenas con miel. They are eggplants or aubergines coated in breadcrumbs and fried, served with sugar cane. Finally, time for a dessert. The pastel cordobés is a pie made with puff pastry and filled with a type of squash preserve. A place related to food you should visit is the Mercado Victoria, a foodie market very much alike other foodie markets in Spain. The difference here is that while you will certainly see tourists in the market, you will also find locals. The market occupies a beautiful building from 1877. And these were our highlights of Cordoba. There are quite a few places to visit, so you might be wondering how much time should I dedicate to Cordoba. Most people contemplate Cordoba as a quick visit on their way to Seville, and most people stay just the one night in the city. Some don't even spend the night in Cordoba. One day is enough to see the most important places in the city, but not all the sites we have mentioned in the video. And you won't have time to go to Medina Azara. If you want to follow our advice, make sure you spend the night in Córdoba when the city looks really beautiful. And if you are sympathetic to slow travel, two nights in the city will simply be great. We hope you liked the video. If you did, thanks for your, the thumbs up. And we hope you fell in love with wonderful Córdoba. Who knows, we might meet traveling through Andalusia in the future. Até mais, hasta la próxima, see you soon.